Hello, Subtle Flow Somatics virtual class. I'm Megan McCarthy. Some of you know me as just Megan. <laughs> and I'm really glad you're here with me today. Uh, I had a request to do neck and shoulders. So here we go. It's neck and shoulders day today. And you'll want to have a strap. Uh, should be wide enough that you can take your arms out to your sides. We'll also be doing a couple things seated today. So if you'd rather sit in a chair, uh, and the rather means, the rather I say because if you're seated and all your awareness is going into your back and spine because you can't sit comfortably on the floor, chair, chair is the way to go. Don't fight your body. Uh, we are going to start lying down, however. So if there's any other additional things, if you want a, a blanket on top of your mat, something underneath your knees, I tend to keep my knees bent and feet on the floor, but if you're going to extend your legs, put something underneath your knees. The rule is when we're working with neck and shoulders is, of course, the neck is part of your spine. So we want to be able to address the neck and the shoulders. And if you have discomfort or pain somewhere else in your spine, then your awareness is going to keep going into those areas. So keep the rest of the body as comfortable as you can. So meaning coming down, on, coming down onto your back. So if you've got, you, know, you don't need fancy bolsters. If you've got a blanket, you can roll a blanket up and put that under your knees or thighs. You could use a folded pillow if you want that. You can pull the pillow up, put that underneath, anything like that. I am going to do constructive rest if you want to join me, which means feet are on the floor and knees bent and coming down. <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is get familiar with where, where are we working today. So neck is somewhat, somewhat visual and and available to most of us. You can even touch the back of your neck and feel those. You've got seven vertebrae in the neck and feel where your neck comes into the base of the skull, maybe even give it a little rub. So get, familiarize yourself and you know, give yourself a little massage back there. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nice to move the tissues through your fingers, get a little blood spy going there. And then also feel the throat and just gently notice your throat. And as you're doing that, Feel how the throat should be long so we don't have the chin tucked towards the chest. If you are choosing to put something underneath your head, we really prefer not to put so much underneath you that the neck is short and you've taken the curve out of the back of the neck. You want to try to keep that natural curve in the neck because what often happens is if we have head forward syndrome, we're here, right? That's, this is where we spend too much time in Slavvasana then we're trying to support ourselves on the floor in that same position where really what we want to start to do is slowly release the neck back into that natural curve. So as much as you can get the head in that space on the floor as opposed to chin tucked towards the chest, we want to be able to do that. So <clears throat> feeling the space once again in the neck and then you can just gently move your head from side to side, just let it roll. You can go up and down, making sort of half circles, but going nice and slow. So as you move your head, just feel the weight of the head going from one side to the other, letting your neck be long and the throat soft. And then settle in, let your neck just be your neck. And I want you to gently roll your shoulders so that you feel where your shoulder blades are touching the floor, just like you can feel the base of the head touching the floor. Now notice where the weight starts into the tops of the shoulders and see if you can feel where your shoulder blades are. So my definition of shoulders, I call it the girdle, right? It's the shoulder girdle, is really, if you feel your shoulder blades, those are some of the main muscles around your shoulder blades. And then coming out to the outer arm bones. So your arms are obviously extension of your shoulder girdle, but we're not gonna move so much from our arms today, a few poses we will, but we're gonna move from the shoulders, the actual girdle of the shoulders, not the arms. And then coming around to the front, Notice your collarbones. You can even touch your collarbones. Get familiar with this area. I call them your break stretch. Struts, they hold your, they hold your uh, shoulders in place. So the stability in your shoulders from a bone standpoint comes from your collarbones and your shoulder blades. So think about that as we're using the muscles around. And uh, several of the things we're gonna do today is gonna help us with the head forward syndrome because what we really do see a lot, especially right now, everybody's been sitting more, is this tends to be more problematic, what we, we call the red light reflex, this down here. And if we think about that position in our body for neck and shoulders, what happens is the back muscles are long, we'd love to think long and spacious, but they're long and weak. 
and the front muscle, muscle, body muscles, so the neck and even the chest, they're compressed, they're short and weak. So we really want to get to a place where there's balance. So we need to open up the chest and create a little more strength through that back line. But let's start by just breathing. Breathing in and out of your nose if it's comfortable, or just breathing in the nose and out the mouth. You can sigh out the mouth. Notice what your breath feels like on your nose. And then let your breath begin to touch your throat. Imagine your breath as a color or a temperature. Feel it, filling your throat. This is one of the best ways really that we can release and relax our neck is we've got the earth supporting us in our most neutral position and we're breathing into the neck. And then just allow your breath to go right down into the sternal notch, like you're sipping the breath to the base of the throat. Focusing on that short distance from the nose to the throat. And I even think of the pattern of breath, the, the journey of the breath. As you breathe in, the breath initially comes upward to the point between the eyebrows. And then it hooks and goes downward into the throat and into the base of the throat, the sternal notch. And that journey for the breath to go back out is an upward motion initially from the throat and coming all the way to the brow point. And then last little part is a downward journey through the nose. So just follow the journey of the breath and then let it come into your chest and your lungs around your collarbones initially. You might even place your hands there if you'd like. You can fan your fingers across your collarbones. Breathe in and underneath the collarbones. Hmm, see what that feels like. Can you get some movement in that space? And then feel your ribs in the back body. And think of your ribs and then just underneath the ribs, between your ribs and the floor are the shoulder blades. Breathe into your ribs and feel that space of ribs and shoulder blades moving together, that connectedness of ribs and shoulder blades in the back body. And see if you can even feel the shape of your shoulder blades. Are they moving at all as you breathe in and out of the middle and upper lobes of the lungs? And so I'll encourage you for a lot of this practice to try to breathe into this space because the other thing that happens when we're in that head forward rounded slump asana posture is it's very difficult to breathe into the chest because we're compressing the chest. So breathe into the space as much as you can. If you feel you need to relax more, then try taking hands to belly and go back to your belly breath. So if it's straining or uncomfortable or causes anxiety in any way to breathe up into the chest, then go back to the belly. But otherwise let your rib cage, think all 360 degrees, let it flow with your breath. Get that nice stable alignment. So we're, we're actually gonna start with the arms to find the shoulder blades. We'll start with our cactus arms today and your legs are in whatever position you need. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. First, we're gonna do a short uh, little pelvic tilt to make sure the low back is relaxed. So coming into low back first, now that we've got the head and the shoulders released, take your hands and feel your pelvis. Notice where your tailbone is. And as you inhale, press tailbone into the floor and feel your low back arch. And then as you exhale, gently release that low back into the floor and lift your tailbone just slightly at the end. So even though we're focusing on the upper half of the spine, start from the lower spine just to release. Give it permission to relax. Inhaling into the arch of the low back. So this is our pelvic tilting. Exhale, slowly press low back, low ribs into the floor and feel the low back lengthen and your abdominal muscles might draw in a little bit. So this one, you can switch your breath into your belly. Belly expands on the inhale like it's lifting the low back. Exhale, low back relaxes. And you can go in and out of this pelvic tilting and we're gonna, or we'll do any other movements that help us to relax the low back. So one of the ones we do is what we call clock face. So if you think you're 12 o'clock is your pubis, 
your three o'clock is your right hip, your six o'clock is the center of your back and spine, or you think of your low ribs and low back, and your nine o'clock is your left hip. You can roll around that clock face, keeping your legs as relaxed. I'm, I apologize, if you have your legs long, this is gonna be the rolling and the rocking is gonna be much more successful if you have your feet on the floor. So get familiar with your low back, if only for the purpose of letting it find its space too, where it wants to be. And you can go both directions if you're doing those rolls. And then see if now that we're moving the pelvis, let your head respond. So just the way the pelvis can roll around, let the head roll around too, and it doesn't have to be any particular pattern. Think of the two ends of the spine, the tail and the tongue. Just very organically exploring motion. So we're not doing any specific movement to start. You can roll through that clock face, but also let your head respond. Keep the jaw relaxed and the eyes soft. Take about another 30 seconds or so to just explore moving tail and tongue. And you can be doing your belly breath. You can also breathe into your ribs. Very organic, intuitive movements. Just let your body move you. Now come back to the center again and feel. Does it feel, still feel like you're in a spate of balance? So as more of an assessment, we'll do our cactus arms first now that we relax through the low back. So you're gonna take your arms out to your sides, bend your elbows and point your fingertips up towards the sky just to get the wrist creases over the elbows. And so I'm in a 90 degree angle, but then let your wrists and your hands be floppy and relaxed. And notice my elbows right to the height of the shoulder. I'm gonna keep this 90 degree angle wrist in line with the elbow and just let my hands fall forward. So this is a little bit of a, a um, test here, assessment. Notice how close or how far, in my case, your fingers are from the floor. This is the internal rotation of your arm bones. And notice what that feels like for your shoulder blades. What you should feel is the tops of the shoulder blades are lifting off the floor a little bit. I'm not forcing it, I'm just letting them fall. We should feel those shoulder blades, the tops of the shoulder blades lifting and the bottoms of the shoulder blades slightly pressing into the floor. So that's internally rotating the arms. Now lift the arms up, keep the hands floppy still, and without letting the wrist fall out to the side, let the arms fall back so they're staying in that goal post position. And see how close your hands get to the floor behind you. So this is your external rotation of the arm bones. So for me, I've got a lot more mobility in external rotation, but for you, just notice now what you should feel is the tops of the shoulder blades are more, there's compression, they're pushing into the floor. And you might even feel a little bit of an arch and uh, more towards the center of the spine, like it's arching away from the floor. And just noticing, does one arm feel different than the other? And then we'll do this in movement. So lift your arms up on inhale, exhale, drop both hands forward. Just let them fall. Notice how the upper shoulders lift. And then inhale, lift up. And exhale, drop them back. So think of your arms. I like to say your arms are like rolling pins, your upper arm bones and you're just rolling those rolling pins, but the movement really isn't coming from your arms, it's your shoulder blades too, right? Or for your whole shoulder girdle. Once you find the movement back and forth, then we're gonna alternate arms. So as you exhale, let your left arm fall forward as your right arm falls back. Inhale, meet back at the center, and I'll exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. So we start with just the arms and noticing the shoulder blades doing opposite things. And then we add the head to this. So when you're ready on exhalation, next time just let your head roll towards the hand that's down towards your hip. I'm not lifting the head, I'm just letting it roll. So that's my lifted shoulder. Inhale, come back. Exhale, let the head roll towards whichever shoulder is lifting off the floor or whichever hand is down by your hip. Inhale back to the center and exhale. So your arms are like two 
the two goalposts are cactus arms and they're just falling with gravity. That's the key here, use gravity. And your head is just rolling very naturally back and forth. If this is going really well and you wanna try the other way, just means turn your head the opposite direction. So as your hands fall, maybe try turning your head towards the upper hand, the shoulder that's pressing into the floor. Come back to the center. Just opening things up for shoulders to move and for neck to move and that correlation between the two because we really can't work the shoulders without working into the neck. Keeping the jaw soft and the eyes and the brow always relaxed. Do one or two more to each side. And then after that last one, reassess, drop your hands forward. So I don't know if you'll notice with me, big difference, boy, I need to do this more often. My fingers are now touching the floor. If you went back to the first time we did this, my hands were up here. So this is a, this is a good sign that this one I know <laughs> works for me. This principle of somatics of my muscles are just tight, they're not releasing, and that helped to release them. But you can just assess yourself. Are your hands any closer to the floor in the internal rotation? And then also to the external rotation, maybe they were already on the floor, but is there more <clears throat> relaxation, less gripping of the muscles? And then take your hands to your, to your belly, relax your shoulders for a moment, roll them around. All right, so, um, we're going to go into a shoulder movement that we'll be moving the arms more. So you're going to take your hands to your sides. And as you exhale, you're going to take your arm bones and roll your arm bones towards the center of your body and squeeze them inward. You might even touch the backs of your hands. You don't have to, but feel the backs of the shoulders really lifting up now in the arm bones and squeeze in on the exhalation. And then inhale, just relax them down and exhale, really squeeze. So think of trying to touch the fronts of your shoulders to one another. You should feel all of those muscles in the chest wall and around your collarbones tighten on the exhalation and then inhale and release them. Take a big breath into that space in the chest on the inhale. Exhale, contract the chest wall, roll the arm bones in. So this is inward rotation of the arms. Inhale, just drop them open. All right, we'll go through the full movement, then we're gonna come back to this just for the neck. So now, as you inhale, roll your arm bones outward. So the same thing we were doing when we were dropping our hands back, externally rotating the arms, but slide them up overhead. And then exhale, take them, just slide them back. Inhale, roll your arm bones away and slide them up overhead. And you, you're gonna to start to feel that arch. Your low back is gonna arch. And then exhale back. Inhale, slide them up just as high as they'll go without the elbows bending. And I like to keep my arms on the floor. I don't like letting them float because then I'm using a lot more muscle. I want to let the floor support the arms. And then back. Find that external rotation. So what we'll find is we're going to move from the tongue this time, but the pelvis may want to find that rocking we did earlier. So now as I exhale, I'm going to roll the arm bones in and squeeze. And what I find is that as the shoulders lift, my tailbone wants to lift a little bit. So I'm, I'm pressing the center of my spine into the floor. The weight is resting in the center of my spine and my tailbone and the backs of the shoulders are lifting. So think of your body like, like a bowl and the two ends of your bowl, your pelvis, pelvic bowl and your shoulders are lifting on the exhale. And then on the inhale, roll your arms and notice how your weight comes into the tops of the shoulders, but also into the tailbone and you're arching your spine away from the floor. And it happens kind of naturally. I'm, I'm initiating from my arms, but my pelvis wants to respond with that rocking we did earlier. And if it doesn't want to, you can ask it to. Exhaling and squeezing the arms so the front body contracts on the exhale, back body spacious. On the inhale, the front body's spacious and the back body contracts. And it might be all the way from the neck through the base of your spine. And letting your head follow this pattern, the chin comes towards the chest on the inhale for now. <laughs> and exhale, chin away from the chest. So if that's not happening automatically, 
You can add it, chin towards the chest on the inhale, and chin away from the chest on exhale. So if it becomes a full body movement, organically let it. You know, don't stop your pelvis from moving, but we're still, think of initiating from the shoulders and letting the rest of your spine respond. Let's do two more rounds. All right, and then just relax. And if in between you wanna hug your knees into your chest, give them a sweet hug, say hello, thank you legs. Whatever you wanna say, you can do that. And then take your feet back down to the floor. So we're gonna change the breathing with the neck a little bit because this one is particular towards uh, working towards any tightness or trauma in the neck. So we're gonna do that same shoulder rolling that we're doing, rolling the arm bones inward and squeezing to the midline, but we're gonna add the we're gonna add a slower movement initially. So you're gonna exhale, roll those arm bones in and really, really squeeze. And then I want you to exhale and see if you can draw your navel center in, press the low back and low ribs into the floor. You gotta breathe into your chest, but tighten all the muscles through the front of the body and then hold there for a few breaths. So if we were in our seated posture here, right? We're basically in that same slump asana, but we're purposely contracting the front body muscles by rolling the arms in, drawing the navel center in. And then you're gonna take that, maybe take a few breaths in it, and then slowly release out of it. Take like five breaths to release out. So as you inhale, slowly let the arms come down and then drop and let it all go. Let all those front body muscles relax. So we're tightening the muscles that are usually short in the front of the body. We're going beyond where they, where they were and tightening them even more. Let's do one more with just the shoulders and arms. So as you exhale, roll those arm bones in, squeeze them in, squeeze the front of your whole shoulders, the head of the arm bones towards one another, lift the backs of the shoulders off the floor. And then you can even exhale, press low back, low ribs into the floor, lift the tailbone, draw your navel center in. So you feel everything tighten through that front body. Really tight, actively tight. Still breathing into the chest. And then slowly, slowly release out of all of that tightness. Let your back body just heal itself on the earth underneath. Front body soft. So if you don't have any contraindications in the neck, we're gonna add the neck to this. And what's really important when we add the neck is you wanna keep the back of the neck long and tuck the chin towards the chest. And we wanna use these little muscles in the side of the neck, SEM. So if you tuck your chin towards your chest right now, they're, they're like as big as your pinky fingers and they're on either side of the neck coming, dropping down from right underneath the bottom of the ear. You can feel them. So tuck your chin towards your chest once and just try lifting the neck. I talk really funny and see if you can feel them. So the back of the neck stays long and then drop down. So if that feels okay, you wanna activate those muscles in the front of the neck. One of the ways that helps me to do that is if I push the tongue into the roof of my mouth, then I really can't talk to you, but push the tongue into the roof of the mouth and then draw the chin towards the collarbones and the collarbones towards the chin and then release. So we, if it's there for you, you're gonna add that head. So you're gonna exhale, roll the arm bones in, squeeze them towards one another, draw the navel center in, press low back, low ribs into the floor, and also lift the head. So now collarbone muscles, your pectoral muscles are contracted, those SEM muscles in the front of the neck, just to lift as high as you can, squeeze it in, whole front body tight, and then whenever you feel you need to, let it all go. Relax, feel the weight of the head. Just let it be supported by the floor. Shoulders relaxed. If that's working for you, we'll do that one two more times. And you may be holding it for five breaths, you might be holding it for three breaths, do what's appropriate for you. Roll the arm bones in first. Feel the pectoral muscles tighten through the chest and the collarbones. Squeeze the arm bones in. And then press your low back, low ribs in, draw your navel center and tuck your chin towards your chest. Lift the neck, feel those muscles in the side of the neck. And you may feel some shaking. I get a little bit of a shaking when I do this with my neck. 
Breathing in it and breathing out. You gotta breathe into your chest if you're drawing your abdominal muscles in. And then slow, slow, slow. Complete release. You might even wanna roll your head around. And then we'll do one more. Roll your arm bones in, bring the chin towards the chest, squeeze, tighten, contract all those front body muscles. Think from your tongue to your tailbone in the front line, tightening and shortening. Eyes are soft though, forehead soft. And then slow release down. Let it go. All right, we're gonna do something that'll bring us into our arms and our legs a little bit more. So leaving the neck aside for a moment, you can roll it around. Take your feet a little bit wider so that your feet are about as, your heels are just slightly wider than your hips. We'll do the left side first because you can see that side. So feel your left foot and thigh. And as you, as you inhale, you're gonna press that forward, reach that thigh bone forward. And then as you exhale, come back and release. Inhale, press the thigh bone forward. So we're actually gonna start from the legs with this one. And exhale, release. Because a lot of the muscles that go into the upper shoulders are your, your trapezius muscles, and they actually drop all the way down through your sides of your body here, right? So we're gonna get more into the sides and underneath the armpit, reaching that leg long. You're gonna tip onto the big toe side on inhale, and then come back. So do one more for just a leg and feel that arch through your left waist. But now I want you to feel your left shoulder blade wherever you want your arm to start. As you're drawing your left leg across the right, press your left shoulder blade into the floor and turn your head to the left if it's comfortable for your head. Keep your right shoulder relaxed and then exhale, come back. So you're drawing that left leg to the right side onto the big toe, press left shoulder blade into the floor so feel an active contraction and an arching through the left side. And then a release. Again, you can do one breath per movement, arching and tightening. So imagine drawing your left armpit towards your left hip and then letting go. Or you can hold it for a few breaths. And sometimes the hold, you really get a better feeling and visualization of those muscles. So I'm pressing left shoulder blade into the floor. Arm could be more at your side or here. It's about the shoulder blade. The arm's more relaxed. I'm pushing left shoulder blade. Watch that the right shoulder blade staying relaxed if you can. And slow release. Let's do one more. If you're doing one breath per movement, that's fine too. Taking the left leg over to the right, pressing left shoulder blade, turn your head to the left. Tighten up so we're contracting that left side, but also arching it. And slow, complete release. Roll your shoulders around. And then we can do the opposite side. Remember in between, you can always hug your knees and your chest. I can't see you, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> opposite side. <clears throat> I'll turn towards you on this one. So I'll turn kind of sideways. The right leg is gonna go inward and forward to the left side of the mat onto that big, big toe side of the foot and feel that arch through your waist. And then exhale back. Do just the leg first, because you'll start to feel it. That stretch through your side body muscles. And then back, keeping the left leg where it is. Notice I'm not dropping my left leg open. I'm keeping my left knee up towards the sky. So sometimes we call this one walking in place, going forward and in here, inward with that foot. And then once you find that, you can add the shoulder in. So as you're taking your right leg over to the left, press the right shoulder into the floor. You can turn your head to your right shoulder. Exhale, turn your head back, let it go. You can do this one breath for movement or stop and hold. I do a little of both usually. So try to keep the left shoulder relaxed, press right shoulder blade in, reach that right thigh bone forward and inward and let go. Notice those muscles through your right side body and right underneath the armpit and the upper back there around the shoulder blade. And let it go. 
do two more wherever you are. Last one, finish it up. You can take a hold, really feel that. Imagine drawing your right armpit sort of towards the hip a little bit. Press the shoulder blade into the floor. Neck is relaxed but turned. And then coming back to the center point. Let it go, you can rock your head side to side. Hug your knees in, or if you wanna take your, we haven't done it yet, maybe you need a full body yawn today. So you can take your legs long, take your arms up overhead, press through heels, tighten all the muscles to the bones, hug the muscles to the bones, and maybe let your back arch. Take a full body breath in, breathe all into the cells of your body, and then exhale, sigh it out, let it all go. You're gonna have a special video coming soon. I've been trying to get a video of my chickens and my dogs pandiculating so I can show you <laughs> what happens in nature in the, in the uh, pandiculation world. So just be ready for that. That's gonna be a real treat. It's been a real treat trying to get the video. All right, so back onto your backs. Um, so we're going to do another one now backed into the neck. We relax the shoulders a little bit. And this one, if you do have any uh, active chronic pain in your neck, particularly if it's with the discs, I wouldn't recommend it because we're actually compressing the discs of the neck just as we did with this one. But it can also be super healing to release the muscles. So what we're going to do once again is tuck the chin towards the chest, make the back of the neck long. So you're taking some of the curve out of the neck. Keep your shoulders relaxed now, though, completely relaxed. Tuck the chin, and then first just roll it towards the left with the head still on the floor. And just notice what that feels like. Go as far as you can, really, really slowly. See if you can keep the shoulders completely relaxed. So your hands can be on your body or at your sides. Tucking the chin and rolling it as far as you can. So if that's all we can do for today, then that's all you do. Otherwise, the next one, we're gonna keep going to the left. You're gonna tuck your chin towards the chest, but lift the head off the floor. Feel those SCM muscles like we did when we were doing it here. But now you're gonna very, very slowly turn the head, and I can't talk to you, towards the left shoulder. And you might feel that trembling Go as far as you can. Keep those muscles tight. Slowly come back. The forehead soft. Once you get all the way back to center, drop the base of the head down and the back of the head and completely let go. You can move your jaw, breathe into your throat. We're gonna do that one just to the left one more time. So if the lifting is not appropriate, you're just turning and keeping the head on the floor, okay? Relax the shoulder blades, relax the upper back. So we're really trying to isolate the neck muscles in this one and see if you can keep the shoulders relaxed. Tuck the chin towards the chest, feel those SCM muscles in the sides of the neck. Either just keep the head on the floor and roll or lift the head off the floor Going to the left again. Slowly, slowly turning. Shoulders and arms relaxed. I have to remind myself. Go as far as you can. Notice how short the muscles are through that left side of the neck. And you're active but long, the muscles on the right side of the neck. Go as far as you can comfortably. Come back to the center, keep the eyes soft in the head. Feels like a lot of work, right? That 12 pound head. And then drop it down, completely relax. I know sometimes it sounds counterintuitive to tighten muscles that are short, but really one of the ways we wake them up is you can either, wherever a muscle is stuck, you can either make it shorter or longer. We just want it to move, right? So this can be a really good way to wake up those muscles in the front of the throat and the neck. Come back to the center. We're going to do the same thing to the right side. So relax back and spine, relax the low back too. Remember that if you need to do any pelvic tilting, if you're getting any pain in the low back, 
let it go. And then we'll turn first without lifting. So tuck the chin towards the chest, lengthen the back of the neck and slowly turn towards your right shoulder. And if you're anything like me, I cannot go as far to this side. This is where I hold more tightness and discomfort. So I can't turn quite as far and that's okay. Just notice that in your own body. But you're going as far as you can. You can feel those muscles in your neck. The le left side is getting long, the right side's getting short. And then slowly coming back to the center. Let's do one more with the head just on the floor. Tuck to tuck the chin, sh tighten those neck muscles and slowly roll over towards your right shoulder. Keep the shoulder blades relaxed and the arm bones heavy. Even think of the palms of the hands. I like to leave my palms facing up. There's a softness and a spaciousness in the palms of the hands. And then slowly rolling back to the center. So if that's working for you, then we lift the head. Otherwise you keep the head on the ground. Tuck the chin towards the chest, lift up. We'll only do it two times. Very slowly turning towards the right. And I know for me, this side, I get a lot more quivering. This is my weak side. Right side of the neck is short and strong. Left side is long and strong. Go as far as you can. And then slowly take it back to the center. And come back, let go. Let your head just gently rock side to side. Watch that we're keeping the shoulders relaxed. One more time to the right, tucking chin towards the chest, either keeping the head on the floor if that's more appropriate for you, or lifting up and slowly turning to the right. Keep the lips soft. And when you're ready, come back just as slow as you went over. Feel those muscles in the front of the throat, holding the weight of the head. And then release the head all the way down and let it go. Completely relaxing. Anything you need to do in between. We're gonna be rolling on to the left side of the body. So this is where you um, may want to keep a pillow handy for part of this. But as we roll on to the left side, <clears throat> you're going to bring, oh, you also might want a blanket for underneath your knee. I happen to have a bolster, but a, blank, a blanket works too. You're going to come onto your side and extend that right leg slightly and place your left knee, inner calf area on a bolster, a blanket, something. So if you're way down here, and your right hip is falling forward, you want to lift the leg so that the right hip is more or less stacked on top of the left, that's all. And then you can use your um, left arm initially as a pillow, but eventually you're going to want to take the left arm down so that your head's on the floor. So if this feels like too much stretch for the right side of the neck to drop your head down, then that's when, where did it go? <laughs> that's when you're going to bring your pillow in. And just, but it, as best you can support it, but don't lift it up here where the right side of the neck is short either, right? You wanna, you wanna maintain that natural length on both sides of the neck now. So you're supporting yourself either at the neutral position or you can keep the right side of the neck slightly longer. All right, and then this is our angel wing. So we're gonna initially move from the arm and then we'll add the shoulder. So take your right hand, top hand, and just begin to sweep it up overhead and then sweep it back down. And if you wanna do this to your breath, get this arm out of the way, you can sweep it up on the inhale and sweep it back down. And what I want you to do is keep the hand on the floor because notice if you lift here, you're moving your arm, but you're not really gonna get that stretch through the side of your body. So I want you to sweep the arm and feel those side body muscles stretch. And then back and down and sweep 
and down. And then once you start to get that and it feels comfortable, sweep it all the way and see if you can take it back behind you and all the way back down and around. So now we make the full circle, still sweeping. And I'm doing my best, so I've actually got a little discomfort in my right arm. I've had it for a while to not bend my elbow. So if you can keep the arm straight, even if it doesn't drop as far back, that doesn't matter, right? Keep that true range of motion, keeping the arm straight. And you can play with that internal and external rotation of the arm bone as you're taking it around. So I say it's a double spiral. We have this big circle of the arm, and then we have these mini spirals of the arm bone rotating inward or outward. And you're just playing with that. Right hip is staying stacked on top of the left hip and the right shoulder on top, top of the left shoulder. So I'm not moving anything but my arm right now. But notice how much you feel into the shoulder girdle. Just making those circles. All right, and then we'll be adding in the more of the shoulder girdle and the neck. So this is where if you're on your arm, you're gonna to wanna to take that arm down. So now as you start to take that arm up and over, I like to flip my palm up towards the sky and let your head roll along like it's watching the hand and drop that right shoulder blade towards the floor. And he'll come back. You can roll onto your forehead and exhale. Take it back down and around. You don't have to do it to your breath either. You can go slower. But I just like that feeling of the top of the inhale. I'm reaching. I feel all that space through the right side body and then I'm dropping the shoulder and then as exhale hand comes back down and you might even take an extra round of breath releasing right keep the head on the floor so one of the things we watch for that um, trauma reaction in the neck is you're you're trying to lift your head up keep your head supported by the earth by your pillow whatever it is that you have underneath you and don't be surprised if you feel this through your hip, right? I, I know that I get a pretty deep stretch through my right hip in this one. So we continue on the journey with the arm in the same direction, but here comes the fun part. I want you to turn the opposite, you turn your head the opposite direction of the hand. So as your arm is reaching to the back right corner, you're gonna look over your left shoulder. And then as that arm comes down and around and it comes in front of you to the left side of your body, you're going to turn your head towards your right shoulder. So just looking in the opposite direction of the arm. And it may go swimmingly for you. It is swimming, right? We're swimming. Or it may be very difficult. Take your time. One of the first things I see is the minute we add the head going the opposite direction, the arm tries to go the other direction. I've always tried to figure out why that happens, something with the nervous system but you still want the arm to go in the same direction. So it's going down in front of you and then over. So one of the more complicated, but I find useful versions of this, we actually add the eyes in too. So if it's going swimmingly and really easy for you, you're gonna turn your head away from the arm, but turn your eyes towards the hand. And then the same thing. My head turns away, but my eyes are turning towards the hand. Kind of crazy. But it's all part of working with your nervous system, which is uh, very pliable, really. So if you want to add that head looking the opposite direction, eyes shifting towards the arm, do a couple more rounds. <laughs> but don't watch me because my eyes are doing crazy like exorcist things I think or something I'm not sure do your last round and then let that arm come in for landing and relax completely ah, all right we're going to do one more on this side and um, this one you're going to want to take your legs a little bit longer so that right leg as well you may still have your pillow underneath you or you can use your arm as a pillow 
and you're going to take, so that, that one was more of a sweeping for the side body. Now you're going to take your right arm and you're going to inhale and reach it up overhead, but I want you to let it come up towards the sky first. Reach it. And then as you're reaching the arm, think of lifting the left waist off the floor and lifting the right ribs up towards the sky. So it's actually a little lateral bend for the spine. You're going to lift and you'll feel a nice stretch under the armpit. And then as you exhale, take that arm down and you're going to reach your right fingers towards your foot. So you'll feel your left waist and side body press into the floor and the right waist will shorten. Your right armpit will come towards the waist. So inhale, reach. So it's the arm. It feels like the arm's moving, but the arm is taking the whole torso with it. Exhale, shorten that right side body. Inhale, reach. Exhale, short and right side body. So we can stay here, and this is obviously a torso move and arm, but we can also add the neck to this. So as you're exhaling, you wanna watch that for most people, they're gonna to try to keep their head really far forward. You wanna to try to keep your, your nose right over your sternal notch, so not in front of it. And as you exhale and take the arm here and reach that hand, Lift your head up so you're gonna feel those muscles on the right side of your neck activating. Left side is long. And then as you inhale, if you wanna get your arm or whatever out of the way, you can lengthen that right side of the neck as you lengthen the right side body. Exhale, lift the head up. So you gotta find for you, if you are lifting the head, if it doesn't work, don't do it. But if you're lifting the head, you don't want to keep that forehead way forward. Do your best to keep your neck in a neutral position so the curve is in the back of the neck and you're inhaling and reaching and lifting straight up. Hug, reach the right fingers towards the toes. And focus on those muscles in the side of the neck. Lifting up. And I know I say, if it's not working, don't do it. You have to decide. It, it's my, one of the terms that I use in my own body now is, is um, joyful discomfort. Like there might be something that goes, oh, I'm here. You know, I'm going to let you know I'm here. But I can still breathe. It's all good. Last round. And if you want to do this and hold for a couple breaths, especially this last one, draw your, so that right waist is short and strong, right side of the neck is short and strong. And then release all the way down. And you can roll back onto your back. Feel free to hug your knees into your chest and roll on your low back a little bit. I'm going to switch sides so I can see the camera. wish I could see you. So feel free to roll on to your right side when you're ready. The first one we do, you're going to want that right leg lengthened and place a pillow, a bolster, anything you got there underneath that left knee so you can stack your left hip on top of your right and your left shoulder on top of your right. You can put something underneath your head or use your arm as a pillow. And first we'll just find that sweeping motion through the left arm. So fingertips of the floor, as, if you wanna do it to your breath, as you inhale, reach it up overhead. So you get a nice stretch through that side and then exhale and take it down. Inhaling and reaching. And exhaling, taking it down. Just do the sweep first and notice how the arm is an extension of the side body. And a sweeping as high as you can go comfortably. You can also let your head follow this one up and down. We didn't do that on the other side, but it happens sometimes. And then when you're ready to make the full circle, sweep it up overhead and then take it all the way around. Imagine holding a doorknob and you can play with that internal and external spiral of the arm bone in addition to the whole arm going in a circle. As best you can, try not to bend the elbow. So as soon as we bend the elbow, it's a bit of a disconnect to this from the side body. So if you keep notice, if you keep your arm straight, 
your side body is a lot more affected by your arm movement than if we bend the elbow and just made circles with the elbow. So you want to feel those side body muscles. Feel the connection of the arm into the shoulder girdle. And then once we find our range of motion through the left shoulder, we add the head to this. So you're gonna let your head just follow the hand and you'll feel your left shoulder blade fall to the floor. And then roll it back. Don't be surprised if you feel some stretching through your hip, but also you're gonna get right into those pectoral muscles and in and around the collarbone. You gotta open up your space for this one, right? So get your mojo working. And then as soon as you get it working, we'll change it up and make it a little more challenging. So now as you're taking the arm around, look in the opposite direction of the hand. And this is a really good place to notice not only if your arm just tried to switch directions in the movement, but also is one side easier than the other to look in the opposite direction. So I find that that's true with my body. It's interesting, just, it's interesting <laughs> the way the nervous system programs itself without our knowledge, right? Well, you can go, you can do this one way and not the other, right? Don't ask why. Just acknowledge it, and acknowledging it is, is part of the healing. It's a big part of the healing. As I call it, finding your flaws. And then there's that little eye trick, too. If you want to go for the whole trifecta of the arm moving, the head looking in the opposite direction of the arm, but the eyes shifting towards the arm as the head turns away. And hopefully at home that should send a little sprite of laughter through, looking in the, looking in the direction of the hand but rolling the head the other way. <laughs> Makes for some great facial expressions. Oops, I missed that one. <laughs> facial expressions too. Do one or two more rounds. Uh, and then come in for a lovely landing. Just be present in your body. All right, so we're gonna do the side body movement if you want to take your legs out a little bit longer. And by the way, I should have said this on the first slide, but if it's more comfortable, put a bolster between your knees. You can do that. You can stack your knees however you want. We'll do just the arm first. <clears throat> so feel that left arm. And now you're going to sweep it up overhead. And as you're sweeping your arm, think of plugging your arm bone into your waist, into your upper waist, so that as the arm reaches, the side body lifts, the left side body lifts, and the right side body lifts, so that there's the arch. You're creating that arch in your waist, in your spine. And then as you exhale, the arm comes down, and you're gonna purposely reach your fingers towards the toes, draw your left armpit towards your hip, and maybe even your hip towards your armpit, so feel that left side contract. Really work on the armpit. And then inhale and reach. And exhale, draw down. So this in itself is a wonderful way to move. If you know that your neck is in a space to, to, um, to take part in this, then as you exhale and reach that hand, you'd lift your head up, but keep your nose right over the collarbone. So not in front of them or just behind the collarbone. So you don't want that head forward because you really want to get into the sides of the neck versus the head forward, you're going to get more into the back. So as you exhale with the head straight up, think of lifting your ear towards your shoulder. And then inhale, come up and over. Let that left rib cage open up and stretch. 
Exhale, contract the left rib cage, ear towards the left shoulder. You can do one breath per movement or hold anywhere you'd like. And my role with this, because like, I keep having to tell myself, otherwise my chin comes forward, my forehead comes forward, is soft palate back. Base of the head in line with the sacrum. If you drew a, if I put a pole to your backside, the pole would touch your sacrum and the base of your head. And if you want to take one or two more, you want to stop and hold it, you can hold it. And then slow release down. Take a moment. We're going to be coming onto our front side before we finish seated, but um, from the front side, if you want to first, before you go to your front side, if you want to hug your knees into your chest, you can. Just be present in your body, but we will be rolling onto our bellies. I need the uh, hair and makeup department. Ponytail, falling out. Okay, onto the belly for the baby cobra. So this one is gonna do, we, so we've done the front of the neck and we've done the sides of the neck and we've done like more of the front sides and the side sides. Now we're gonna do the back of the neck. And that's why I call this baby cobra or sometimes I call it neck cobra. Baby cobra and neck cobra. So the arms are not in play. I don't want you to press into your hands. I want you to keep your arms as relaxed as possible. So they could be elbows here at the sides of your shoulders or more of like a diamond shape. It doesn't matter as long as your arms are relaxed. We're gonna start with just the neck and the upper back. So the key to doing this one is we don't want the neck in this big, the back of the neck in compression. So what usually happens is we go to lift and we lift the head and we stretch the throat and the back of the neck gets really short. I want you to keep the neck in a neutral position. So go ahead and place either your chin or your forehead on the floor and see if you can get the back of the neck long and the throat still soft and spacious. And then instead of lifting, lifting the head and changing the shape of the neck, Inhale, reach the crown of the head forward and lift the head up without changing the shape. So I'm not lifting my chin up. I'm lifting the whole head, keeping my arms soft. And we lift on the inhale. And then we drop down and turn onto one cheek on the exhale. If the rotation feels okay for your head. So reach the crown of the head forward. Think of lifting from your collarbones your sternum, the upper shoulders, and exhale, turn on to the opposite cheek. Your legs are relaxed. You can shake out your legs if you didn't do that, and I apologize if you need to shake out your legs. Think of just engaging and lengthen. So as much as we're lifting upward, we're first reaching outward. Reach the crown of the head forward, sternum forward and exhaling down. And the breath is a really important part of this because the breath is buoyant and it can float you up. So think as you breathe in, breathe into your chest. Float up with the breath. Feel the breath as if it's coming into the back of the neck and into the chest and it's floating you up. As you empty out the breath, you release and slowly float back down. If you've ever had the ability to be in water and you take a big breath into your belly and your body sort of comes up to the top of the water, right? It surfaces. And then you let that breath out and you sink back down. Imagine yourself in water right now and make it as effortless as possible. Float forward and upward as you breathe in. And then downward, feel that support as you exhale, and if you need an extra breath when you're down there, let go, keep those shoulders soft, watch that we're not tightening the arms or the shoulders. You're welcome to float through. If at any point you wanna stop and hold, you can. Just 
feeling those muscles in the back of the neck. So again, I'm not lifting my chin. I'm reaching the crown of the head forward. Imagine drawing the ears away from the shoulders, but relax the arms, lift your collarbones. Top tips of the shoulder blades reaching forward. Feel all those muscles in the back of the neck supporting the weight of the head. And then exhale. Let yourself come all the way down. You can rest onto one cheek. To release from the back bend, you can either press back into a child's pose or go back onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. If you'd rather like do a little cat cow, if that's something that's in your practice, you can do that too. We're gonna come to seated next, so where we need to go in between. So seated, pull your chair in if you're not comfortable on the floor because we're going to be here for about 10 minutes. Or, you, you know, the other option is if you've been doing a lot of sitting like most of us have and you don't want to have, be so weight-bearing in your back and spine, you can do these standing. You're welcome to stand up and do these as well. So if that's more comfortable for you, get onto your feet and balance yourself in a, in a nice strong mountain pose. Mm. No spinal loading here, <laughs> so lift up tall. So first we're just gonna acknowledge the shoulders and we're gonna do this one um, one at a time with the shoulders because I find that they're different. They're like my twins. They look the same, but they're really not the same at all. So we're gonna start with the right shoulder and we're gonna find our, our range of motion, our, our four spaces, I call it the clock. So you're gonna inhale and lift that right shoulder up. So think of somebody grabbing you from underneath your armpit. And I'm not lifting my elbow. It's not a chicken wing coming out. I'm lifting from my shoulder girdle. So lifting the shoulder up and then letting it go. And then the next space is back. So I press and it's not my elbow taking it back. I want it to be but it's the front, the head of the arm bone is drawing back, or think of drawing your right shoulder blade towards the spine. So feel a tightening through the right shoulder blade, and then let go. And the next one is downward, so if somebody were to gently press on the top of your shoulder, or think of dragging your armpit down towards your hip. It's a downward motion, your shoulder blade will draw downward towards your hips, and then release. And then the last one is forward, so we're gonna tighten the muscles around the collarbones. Head of the arm bone comes forward like you're going to try to touch it towards your collarbone and you'll feel a stretch in your upper back through your shoulder blade area and then release. So those are our four points. I call it the 12 o'clock. Going up, you're going to feel the muscles tighten through the top of the shoulder and the side of the neck and then release down. The 3 o'clock is back. Feel your shoulder blade area tighten. Slide the shoulder blade towards the spine. Release. And then downward, so this is your six o'clock. Feel that tightening underneath your armpit, 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 your serratus to pull that down and then lengthening through the neck, release. And then forward, feel those pectoral muscles tighten, upper back stretches, and then let go. So we do that three times around usually just to find those four spaces. I'm gonna turn towards you. So do your last round, round around and check that you see you're not using your arm, you, you, you're moving from your shoulder. And the other thing is check your neck because what I see a lot is as we're doing this, where the neck does this, the neck does this, the neck, you know. So, so keep your head, the crown of the head, if, if we dropped a plumb line through the crown of the head right now, it'll go right down through the center of your neck and through your spine and wind up right at the base of your spine. So the head stays on that plumb line. And then once we've found those four positions, see if you can move all four of those in a circle. I shouldn't have started with my sticky shoulder. <laughs> Takes too much concentration to talk to you and move it. So rolling slowly all the way around. And watch when you try to, you know, it's like you're gonna move your head, you're gonna try to move your shoulder from your neck muscles. 
they're in there on a few of these, but the head and neck, the neck stays soft and relaxed. Move your shoulder from your shoulder girdle. Think of the collarbone area and the shoulder blade that we found when we were on our backs in the very beginning. And then if you find that full circle, you can switch the direction. You can go forward or up and forward and down and back. So this is isolating shoulder movement and keeping the neck soft and relaxed, where we had isolated neck movement before and kept the shoulders soft. Just move shoulder. There's something crazy like 44 combinations of movement or something that the shoulder can make. Don't quote me on that. But because all of these different muscles and the range of motion that we have in the shoulders. So we're just exploring a few of them in the circles. And then relax it. Hmm. All right, we're gonna do one more for that right shoulder and arm. So you're gonna take your hand out to your side and then you're going to, remember the internal and external rotation. So you're going to externally rotate it and look at it go like, let's say you had a, let's say you had a big bunch of flowers in your hands and you're gonna go, oh, and look at that. Look at your hand, turn towards it, turn your palm up, externally rotate it. And then you're gonna internally rotate it. So the shoulder will come forward and the hand will come behind you and you're gonna go, oh no, I don't wanna look anymore. So you're gonna look the other way. All right, so you it, externally rotate, look at your hand, internally rotate, look away from your hand. And you can even take that hand kind of behind your back if it's there for you. You can bend the elbow here and here. Take your time. You can do it to the breath or not. I usually inhale here and exhale. Feel that all the way up through the side of the neck. Inhale. So this one is such a case for me to show this interconnectedness of arm and shoulder and neck. And just a nice gentle movement. Do one or two more. Internal rotation, look at the arm. And exhale, look away. Just that's, we're just spiraling the arm, right? Woo! Let's then stop for a moment and feel the two sides of your neck, feel your two shoulders. Are they different? What do you feel? Close your eyes and be a, a human feeling instead of a human being or doing. Just feel. And then we'll do the left shoulder. So we're going to find those four positions in the clock face first. So the first one is the 12 o'clock. We lift the shoulder up. Imagine somebody coming underneath your armpit and you're gonna feel those muscles tighten through the top of the shoulder and the side of the neck to lift it up and then let it go. Second one is back. So think of sliding your left shoulder blade towards your spine. You'll feel a stretch in these muscles around the collarbone and I'm not pulling my elbow back. I'm keeping my arm relaxed. Release. Next is our six o'clock. We go downward. So you feel a nice stretch to the top of the shoulder and the side of the neck and the muscles underneath the armpit engage and then let go and then forward. So think of drawing the head of the arm bone towards your collarbone. So tightening that area around your collarbone and making space in your upper back around your shoulder blade release. We'll go around two more times. Inhale upward. Exhale release. Watch the head. The head is not moving this one. We're keeping the spine tall and erect. And if you're in a chair, remember we're not falling into the chair back. We're not in slump asana, we're tall, right? We're going back and release and down. So opportunity to strengthen those spinal muscles, release and then forward. That's our nine o'clock and release. We'll go around one more time. Upward, complete release, back. Let go, down, and release, and forward. Notice how it just, like it just returns to what I call that space of grace. When you stop doing, that's that space where it just wants to be. And then once you've found those three, or excuse me, four points, make some circles, go up and back and down and forward. Could be north, south, east, and west too. 
except I'm directionally impaired. So if I tried to teach that to you, particularly in a virtual class, I'd really get in trouble. So we're gonna stick with clock face. Making those circles and feel those muscles working for you in the collarbones and the shoulder blade, those areas we focused on when we were resting on our back in the very beginning and the arm itself is soft and relaxed. And if you find those full circles and you wanna switch directions, you can go up and forward and down and back, keeping that head. So a lot of times we think our head is where it needs to be and it's even just like 10 degrees forward. So take the base of the head back just a little bit and see, does it feel better? If you take that base of the head, like if you had a wall behind you, base of the head back just a little bit more, does it feel better to do that? Length through the back of the neck, that natural curve is there in the back of the neck. We don't wanna lose that curve but also spacious in the throat. And then relax the shoulder. I have happy shoulders now, we're getting there. Last one for that left arm seated. So now you're going to, um, you're going to do that. Take your hand to your side, externally rotate the arm. So imagine you have flowers in your hand or I don't know, whatever it is. Flip your palm out, externally rotate, and then look at, oh, look what I have, right? And then you're gonna turn it internally, rotate that arm, let the shoulder come forward. You can either keep it just reaching out or you can take it behind you, bending the elbow, and then look away. And I like doing both. It's a little bit different feeling. I'm here, I'm extended and looking at it. I can do it here without bending the elbow. That feels a little bit different. You can do both ways. Just Remember that somatics is about you being in your inner body, in your felt sense. That big fancy word, interoception, hmm, that's all it is. What do you feel, what, what are you experiencing right now? As a soma, a living, breathing being, last one. And then relax, now notice again how your arms feel from the seated, or maybe you're standing, standing position, we're gonna grab our strap, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of, it's, this is definitely mobility, but it's also a little bit of strengthening. Um, so we're gonna take the strap, and the first thing you're gonna do is take your hands to the strap and take your wrists as wide as your shoulders and extend through your arms and flip your palms up. So I'm holding the strap, and I'm gonna pull on the strap. And notice how when you pull on the strap, it's like you're trying to pull it apart, you're gonna feel your arm muscles tighten. But what you don't wanna do is feel your neck muscles tighten. So you're gonna pull on the strap, but draw your shoulder blades down your back. So if when you pull on that, you're like, you do this, right? Relax your shoulder blades down and pull so your arms are strong. And now keep that, plug your arm bones. Imagine if you're out here, plug your upper arm bones into your shoulder girdle a little bit. And then as you inhale, just go up as far as you can go. That's all. And exhale, come back down. And each time you can try to go a little bit further, but you're pulling on that strap. So the arms are engaged. You're going to feel the muscles in your upper back, even in your chest. Exhale, you can come all the way down if you want or stop when your wrists are at the height of your shoulders. Each time exploring, what is that range of motion when? So this is active range of motion, meaning your arms are engaged as are your, you're gonna feel your shoulder blade muscles, shoulder girdle, reach up, pull on that strap. And you can keep moving. This one gets a little tedious sometimes, but that's good. You're getting into those deeper layers of muscle fiber. Movement is always good. You wanna move the tissues. Again, though, we're watching. So what I sometimes see, when we're doing this is we come up and the head goes here, right? You gotta keep that head in line. Keep the neck soft and relaxed. And if you wanna stop and hold for a couple of breaths, you can align your head, take the head back a little bit, relax the jaw, and then take it down. Relax your arms. We're gonna do one more with the strap. Standing, seated, chair, floor, wherever you want to be. So now you're going to 
face your palms downward and take your arms as wide as you can go where you can still pull and feel a, a formidable fight from hand to hand. So if you're too wide, it's not gonna be, especially as we start to move, if you're too wide, it's not gonna be comfortable for your shoulder joint, and you'll know. But you do wanna take your hands slightly wider than your shoulders. Pull that strap again, and same thing. Inhale, come up overhead. And just go as far as you can go. Keep the crown of the head lifted. Throat soft. And exhale back down. And inhale up. So this is about mobility, but like I said, functional mobility. You're engaging, and the way you're engaging is pulling on that strap, but you're also, the shoulders aren't doing this, shortening the sides of the neck, the shoulders are staying down. I think, I try to visualize myself lifting my arms from my collarbones and my shoulder blades. And this one, there's a whole different version of range of motion if it's available to you, and if not, don't do it. But I lift, that's always my rule, if not, don't do it, lift up, and then if it's there, you can drop behind you to whatever degree is comfortable. Come back on inhale and drop down. So there's the inhale up and the exhale down, or there's also the inhale up, exhale behind you. Some people can go all the way around. You gotta decide. Inhale back up and exhale down. Functional mobility through the shoulders. Inhale here. Exhale, maybe just stopping there. You gotta pull, we wanna be pulling on the strap so it's active, and then back down. Do one or two more. Getting all kinds of creaks and cracks as I do this. Crack, creak, creak, creak. All right, oh my goodness. Get rid of that strap. Before we go down, we're gonna finish it with just a little, a little washing here. So you don't have to use the strap, but you can take your hands together, take your hands over the crown of the head and just make some circles. And you can move your rib cage. Think of this whole shoulder girdle, like everything from here up. Move it around, rolling the hands around. So I'm clasping my fingers into a basket. And you go the opposite direction and I'm lightly pulling on my fingers, just tractioning the fingers against one another. Opposite direction, you can go both ways. And that's it. So your shoulders might feel a little bit fatigued. That's normal. See if your neck feels like it did something too, but it's also long and relaxed and we're gonna come down onto the floor for relaxation. So when you get down there, it may well be that there's something else you need to do, whether that's just moving your head gently from side to side, rolling your shoulders around. If you wanna do a couple of those pelvic tilts to relax your low back, hugging your knees and your chest, just giving yourself a little rock. Take it wherever you need to go right now. <clears throat> Feel free to use a support, not only underneath your head, but underneath your legs to let your low back relax. Letting the back body release into the floor. We're gonna start from the head. Just feel the weight of the base of your skull what part of your skull is touching the floor. And then wrap around to the sides of the head, feeling your ears, your right eye and your left eye, your nose. Maybe sensing your breath coming in and out of the nostrils. Feel the upper lip and the lower lip. Soften your tongue and your mouth. And just create some space in the mouth cavity. Relaxing the jaw, the tongue. And begin to breathe into the throat, right into the back of the throat, the upper throat. And 
and sense that breath again as it comes up through the nose and then it changes directions going down into the throat on the inhale. As you exhale, feel the breath going back up the throat, finishing its course of movement as it goes down from the brow point and out the nose. Focus on the path of the breath as it goes from nose to throat, starting from the top of the throat, the base of the throat, and then coming down through the back of the neck. You can think of the vertebral bodies in your neck as if you can breathe into each one of those. all the way down to the sternal notch, sipping into the base of the throat at the sternal notch. And all of your awareness is just from the point at the beginning of the nose, edges of the nostrils, to the brow point, and from the brow point to the base of the head, Feel where the neck connects to the head, going downward to the base of the throat, where the neck connects to the body. All your awareness from that point, feeling the breath. It's like the shape of a hook going from the nose upward to the brow point, and then down to the base of the throat on the inhale upward from the base of the throat to the brow point, back down and out the nose on the exhale. And just breathing into the space, noting the brow point, the throat, the base of the sternum. Notice if your exhalations get a little bit longer and slower. If you just sip your breath, like as if there were, as if there were a sweet smell in the air right now. You just want to slowly savor that smell as you sip it in through your nostrils, to your throat. Noticing if the head feels light or heavy. Letting all your facial features be soft and smooth. Skin on the face is smooth and relaxed. You can feel the breath touching the neck as it goes in and out. Three to five more rounds of breath, just focusing on the space from the nose to the base of the throat, sternal notch. Bring your awareness into the chest and the lungs. Think of the heart as the center. And continue that breath pattern so that it's coming all the way down into the heart, the front of the heart, but also the back of the heart between the shoulder blades. Breath comes in through the nose to the brow point, going upward continuing downward from the brow point through the throat and into the heart. Feeling the chest and the lungs. 
As you breathe out, chest and the lungs relax as they empty and the breath goes back up through the throat, back of the sinuses to the brow point, and then downward and out the nose. Continuing to breathe in this, you can see the symbol of the breath flowing like a hook shape from the nose to the heart. Any color, temperature, or even a sound. And sense the movement that the breath creates in the chest and the lungs, around the collarbones, the shoulder blades and the whole circumference of your ribs. And you wanna just let your breath get soft, and more spontaneous, but continue to feel the breath flowing through the neck and the shoulders. And embrace that breath into all parts of the neck, the front, the back, the sides, the whole shoulder girdle from the center of the sternum out to the edges of the arms, center of the spine and the back through the shoulder blades, under the armpits. If you've learned to extend your practice beyond our relaxation, so either you have a favorite meditation that you do, or just laying here longer, enjoying this time inside yourself. I encourage you to do that. It's the beauty of a home practice. If you'd like to work your way back up to a seated position, you can take a full body stretch or hug your knees in rolling to one side and pausing for as long as you'd like before you come back up. When we work with the throat and the shoulders, we recognize they hold space for two of our chakras. The heart is the anahata. Anahata meaning unstruck or unchanged. It is the space of unconditional love, compassion. And that starts with yourself. Say something nice to yourself. Offer yourself a, compl a compliment. And the throat is the Vishuddha chakra, and Vishuddha means purity. And it's the space where we under, begin to understand ourselves and our journey at a higher level. And it's how we communicate, both listening and sharing of ourselves. But it's not just our communication in the human form, it's our communication with our higher power, that trust. Take a moment and offer yourself the thought of trust in your higher power, trusting your journey. And 
thank you for being with me today. Have a beautiful day wherever you are, whatever time it is. Speak from your heart and listen from your heart. Peace. Namaste.